Hi, I'm Doug Mandel, and welcome back to my uh, special series called Photography Under 10, where I interview photographers, professional photographers, about one work of, of theirs which they want to talk about. And today I'm joined by my friend and one of my favorite photographers, Todd Heido. Todd, welcome. Thank you, Doug. Thank you very much for uh, um, asking me to do this. It's, it's nice. Thanks. Well, thank you, especially for doing this in the middle of the afternoon. Uh, and I guess I will say, you know, we're both still sheltering at home and it's nice to take yes. a photography break in the middle of all of this craziness. So. Absolutely. It's a welcome uh, conversation. Yeah, definitely. Great. Yeah. So for people who know your work and you're one of the most well-known California based photographer, contemporary photographers, and your work kind of has an eerie, uh, eerie, I don't know how you describe it, but an eerie feeling of, uh, some people have described it as uh, isolation. I mean, a lot, of, a lot of people are returning to the views or the photographs of your home series with the light yeah. on as people are sheltering at home. Absolutely. It almost connotes like an image of isolation and, and so forth. But in terms of the photograph we're going to talk about today, which is one from your, I believe you're from Ohio. Is that yes. right? Yeah, I, I grew up in Kent, Ohio, um, where right. Kent State University is. And um, uh and that, and that photograph, like many of the photographs um, that I've made, uh, um, are, are made in, in kind of near, around where I grew up in Ohio. Okay, great. Why don't I put it up and sure. we, can, we can share it and then talk about why, you, uh, why, why this image and what it really means. I'm going to actually blow this up. Okay. There we go. Right. Um, it's so, a lot better to look at than us. <laughs> that, that, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I agree. And I, I love this photograph. You know, I first saw this photograph being displayed uh, in the battery. Mm -hmm. And then I saw it uh, uh, up at um, Case Moore Kirkaby's gallery in San Francisco in Dogpatch. Uh -huh, when uh -huh. people are no longer sheltering from home, that's one of the great contemporary photography galleries in the city. But why don't you tell us about this photograph and uh, what you were thinking when you made it and how you got this wonderful uh, glow of light in the upper right hand corner reflecting down mm -hmm. uh, with the lamp on the on the uh, on the road and I'll kind of let you take it from here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, so this picture is um, um, this is, this is one of the um, I, I had a book that was called Excerpts from Silver Meadows um, that I had made. Um, as part of a, um, a commission by the um, Transformer Station, um, uh, which is part of the Cleveland Museum of Art in Ohio. Um, so the, they, they were opening like a, um, a new space, a, a couple named Fred and Laura Bidwell, some of my collectors, um, uh, some of my, they're like some of the greatest um, uh, people I know, and also some of the most generous uh, in terms of, they really brought um, art uh, in a serious way, like to Cleveland, Ohio and Akron, Ohio, which is basically, right where I grew up uh, in between those two places. And um, so they were opening this new space that was kind of an alternative space to a museum. It was sort of like uh, PS1 uh, to, to MoMA. It, it, it was basically, like, instead of an old school building, it, it was an old power station and they um, uh, made it into that. And so I, they commissioned me to do the first show and they wanted me, they wanted the work to like, kind of loosely be about Ohio. And they, cause they knew that I was doing that work already. And um, and so I made, I made all that work, but where this picture comes in, um, and, and, the, and the way that this picture, you talked about how it glows and how it's, uh, there's the, the light at the top and all that is, um, you know, for, uh, for many years, I basically made images on a tripod, um, you know, at night, um, and I would hold, you know, and, and it would be a long exposure and, you know, um, and the pictures are, you know, like rightfully static. Um, because they're of homes and, and such, and like uh, buildings usually, uh, homes you know, that you want it to be straight and perfect and, you know, and all that. Um, so basically, but, but then I, I, I came, like, like as, as digital photography um, started to like, like basically come together in a really amazing way, uh, which is where it is now, um, I had gotten a digital camera to, to, to start playing around with that and to start seeing what um, this new technology can do because new technology is always like the instrument of change for the aesthetics of photography. Um, mm -hmm. It's something that like every time there's a new format developed, it, you know, it, people make different looking pictures. Um, you know, even just the simplicity of like, 
think of Alexandra Rodchenko like leaning over a balcony, you know, to photograph straight down with a 35 yeah. millimeter camera, a Leica or something like that, that you can just hold in your hand and, and, and um, you know, lean over a balcony and make a picture and not drop the camera on people's head. Um, but, uh, um, you know, versus like the old, you know, Carlton Watkins, you know, glass plates and all that, you know. Um, and then digital photography for me um, is something that it, this picture wouldn't really exist like this without that because um, the, the main thing that's different for me with, with using a digital camera is that you're able to handhold a camera in very low light, like exactly like the light in this picture. Like, like this, mm -hmm. was a, this is a picture that's made, um, it's kind of like, uh, in the um, right around the backside of my where my parents live, um, and um, um, and I always I found this road that there's this road that's interesting. It's also called Seasons Road, which is curious because I've visited it in many different seasons. Um, <laughs> and um, um, but 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 it's it's a place that's like it just has this quality of like in the winter time in Ohio. Like I love to go back there for Christmas because the um, you know the trees, all the leaves are off the trees. The weather is starting to get bad. It's raining like this. It's snowing like this, and um, and so that's kind of where I made this image. And then when I was um, um, when I when I was doing this one in particular, it was just kind of one of those perfect times of like being in the right place at the right time, with the right light and the right weather and the right camera. Um, and um, and so and you mentioned like the glowing light at the top, and then. Um, the, the haziness and the um, sort of glowy background light in there. Um, that just really comes from like shooting through the window of the car. And then, um, and then at dusk, you know, light turns, uh, you know, this magical like bluish color um, mm -hmm. after the orange goes away. And, um, uh, and then, you know, the, it, it eventually turns into midnight blue. Um, and, um, uh, but so with this, um, it was kind of like like having those warm colored street lights um, against this blue background. Um, some of those basic things of photography, or, or not photography, but of all art, like color or theory, like you know, warm colors look good with cool colors. Right. Um, that's kind of exactly what's going on here, and so it really kind of separates the light sources, and uh, and you can see where things are coming from. Like I love the little um, you know trail of puddles down the 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 the, the, the road that have. Um, that light reflecting in it as well. So it's kind of like, you know, there's like three points of light that are warm and then the rest of it has that, you know, that beautiful dusky blue um, color to it. So that's sort of, that's the scoop on how that was made. And and you you mentioned that you shot this out of your car. So yes. did this happened because you just got in your car and you decided to drive around uh, and shoot or had you seen the space before? I mean, how did that well, happen? Well, um, 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 I knew of this road because it was, it's, it's, uh, it's again, right around the corner from where my family lives. Um, but, um, I, um, but shooting through the car is something that's, uh, that I've sort of developed. Um, actually, ironically, way, way, way back in the very beginning, in, in almost 20 years ago in, uh, um, in House Hunting, the, the, the book, my first book, there's, a, there's one photograph in there that's made through a rainy windshield. And, um, um, and it was sort of like I put it in there as a, um, it was sort of just like a, 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 a pace breaker or like it was like something to like change the, the mood a little bit. Um, um, when after flipping through the book, it was something that needed to shift there. And so I, I used this daytime um, picture of a road, of a suburban road, uh, and, the, and the water was running down the windshield just like this. And it made a really Im impactful like mood to it. Um, and I also really liked it because it's something that it's kind of like memory because it's, um, you know, the, the, the water on the window makes your, the scene look fuzzy and clear at the very same time, kind of just like our memories are. Yeah. Um, and it's, um, and it's something that I've always, that, that, that little uh, fact is, it, it's, it's curious. I, I think that that makes it interesting. So, um, I, and so, and so shooting for the window originates from just, trying it out and just seeing something and grabbing your camera and just taking a picture and what happened. And then you look at that and then I realized, Hey, that's actually really interesting. Like, uh, what if I keep doing it? It's kind of like all photographers, a lot of photographers, like they stumble upon something perhaps accidentally, yeah. which of course the first time I shot through a rainy window was an accident. I didn't know what was going to happen. Um, and it also wasn't even on a digital camera, it was on film. So I didn't even know about it. until much, much later. 
when I processed it and looked at it. Um, but um, so, uh, so it just, you know, you, you come across these things and, um, and then you do them again and you refine them and you work at them. And so this has sort of become not the only way I shoot, but, but it's definitely like, I'd say half of the pictures I take, um, you know, of landscapes are through the window of the car. Um, Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. And, and whether it's clear or not, like sometimes I could, of course I can just wipe the windshield and make it totally clear and you would never know. Um, but, um, even in that, just shooting through glass at all, even if it's perfectly streak free, it still changes your picture a little bit and gives it a little bit of a, a haze or a little something to it that, that, that creates an atmosphere and a mood and a mystery that I really enjoy. Interesting. Well, Todd, thank you so much for that explanation. It's certainly given me uh, a better understanding of this image, which I've always just found to be so mysterious and beautiful at the same time. Thank you. And uh, thank, you. thank you for spending time with us this afternoon. You're welcome. You're very welcome. I appreciate it. Thanks for taking the time to listen as well. Of course. All right. All right. Take care. Okay.